Little People, Big Dreams, Wilma Mankiller. Written by Maria Isabel Sanchez Vergara. Illustrated by Alexandra Bowman. Once in Oklahoma, there was a thoughtful girl called Wilma. She was a proud member of the Cherokee tribe. Her people had lived in America for thousands of years before European settlers arrived and took their land. Under threats and false promises, her ancestors were forced to leave their homes and walk to land set aside for them. It was named Indian Territory by the government. The trip was so hard that those lucky enough to make it called it the Trail of Tears. Things had got better, but life was still tough for Wilma's family. They were so poor that her mother used flour sacks to make clothes, and the eleven siblings had to hunt, fish, and pick peanuts to bring food to the table every day. Her family, like many others, was persuaded by the government to leave their land and move to San Francisco, the big city. Suddenly, Wilma was leaving not just her friends behind, but her roots, too. It was her own little trail of tears. Wilma and her siblings were the only Native Americans at her new school. Sadly, most students bullied them and made fun of their last name. So she ran away and completed high school after living with her grandmother for a year. One day at a Latin dance, she met a guy named Hugo. Once they married, her husband expected her to stay at home to take care of their two daughters. Still, Wilma dreamt of making a difference in her community too. Her life changed when Native American demonstrators took over Alcatraz, an island in San Francisco Bay. They called attention to the government's mistreatment of their people, and Wilma joined them in raising money for the cause. She began taking night courses in college and used all she had learned to organize activities and programs for the indigenous students in her community. But her husband was not happy with her choice, and they finally split up. Back in Oklahoma, she fell in love again and got a job with the Cherokee Nation, one of the largest tribes in the United States. Wilma worked so hard to improve the lives of her people that the tribe's principal chief asked her to be his right hand. Two years later, Wilma succeeded him as the tribe's leader, becoming the first female principal chief. She led the Cherokee Nation for 10 years, fighting to protect the environment and working toward an equal relationship with the U.S. government. Some members of the tribe didn't like having a woman in charge, but the eldest of them became Wilma's biggest supporters. They knew that Cherokee women and men had shared the power before. It was time to get the harmony back. Even after she left office, the tribal leaders kept seeking her advice. She always told them to follow the Cherokee approach to life by focusing on the good things and thinking that every day is a great day if you want it to be. And every summer, as they celebrate their roots, the whole Cherokee Nation remembers Little Wilma, the girl who knew that the happiest people are those who care about others and who stand for something larger than themselves. Wilma Mankiller Born 1945, died 2010. Wilma Pearl Mankiller, a member of the Cherokee Nation, was born in Tulequa, Oklahoma. She grew up on a farm assigned to her grandfather after the U.S. government forced him and others to leave tribal land on an arduous, deadly journey known as the Trail of Tears. The farm had no electricity or plumbing, and the Mankillers foraged for food and made their own clothes. A government program designed to break up Native American communities encouraged them and other families to move away from their land to San Francisco. 
they were made lots of promises about housing and jobs that didn't come true. In the 1960s, she was inspired by Native American activists who were fighting for their civil rights, such as the right to live on ancestral land. Wilma became involved with activism herself and raised money for people protesting at Alcatraz, a small island off the coast of San Francisco. After her marriage ended, Wilma returned to Oklahoma with her two daughters and began working for the Cherokee Nation. Despite facing discrimination for being female, she was elected as deputy chief and then principal chief of the tribe, becoming the first woman to ever take the role. During her 10 years in leadership, she worked to improve standards of education and health care for her people. When her time in office came to an end, Wilma served the community in a different way by teaching Native American studies. A believer in positive thinking and decisive action, Wilma is a role model for girls and women everywhere.